up, YouTube? It's your boy Steve from the Valley Garage, and today we are doing a coolant change on this here Honda Fury. Now, this is going to be a step-by-step walkthrough process, teaching you, showing you how to do what to do to change your coolant. If you know how to do it, move on. But if you want to learn how to do it, stay tuned. So obviously when we're changing the coolant in our Fury, we're going to need coolant, but we want to help get all that old coolant out of there. So go ahead and get yourself a bottle of distilled water or deionized water from the grocery store or whatever. You really don't want to use tap water. Definitely don't use salt water because minerals, deposits, impurity things will eat up and corrode the inside. and just make things not flow properly. So distilled water will be your friend to help wash that out. Also, what we're also gonna need are uh, some funnels. That's always good. We're gonna need a pick. We're gonna need a 10 and eight millimeter socket. And we're also going to need a number five millimeter hex head. Uh, to complete the install. So that's all that we need. Oh, and obviously you're gonna need a drain pan. I made this out of a little quarter oil, five quarter oil, just cause it's slimline, it can get under. Uh, you can do this without a motorcycle stand. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, Honda recommends it being on a stand. I have a jack. If you don't have one, get yourself one. I will put, in the description, in the description below, links to all this stuff that you can use right from Amazon. Um, obviously, if you're a Prime member, you get it real soon. But anything you buy here, I get a cut kickback from Amazon, so then I can spend money in getting, putting it back into the channel. So, if you buy anything through my links, it definitely helps me out. It helps you out because you have now the tools to do what you need to do. But, um, well, I've guess we should just dive right in and get started. So again, we're going to go step by step through the whole process uh, to just make a complete walkthrough guide for you. And, um, you know, use the video to help you. If you learn a thing or two, fantastic. This is just another reason to prove you don't need to be a professional mechanic to work on your stuff. So let's get started. All right, first step, got to jack her up. All right, next up, what we want to do is we want to clear the way to get ourselves easy access to the coolant reservoir and the drain. In order to do that, we want to take this cover off. It's one bolt and it's going to be a five millimeter hex head. Once that's out, there's little grommets that are plugged in just like your valve and your side covers. So you're just going to carefully pop them away. All right. So we'll set that aside. What we'll do is we'll put the screw back in our mount bolt here. That way we don't lose it. Put this down somewhere on a rag. Definitely don't want to get this scratched up. Now that we cleared away of what we need to do down bottom for the drain, we're also gonna need to obviously get to the fill section, the fill top of the radiator cap. And where that's located is actually right behind your heat ignition and secret compartment toolbox. So in order to get access to that, best to do is grab a pick. And what you'll see are these little plugs you just take your pick and poke in the center just like that there's one on the right left and i just noticed the freaking glass is dirty shit 
Sorry about that. Didn't realize your eyeballs were uh, blurry. So you've got your right, your left, and one more on the bottom. There you go. And you just pull them out. They should just come straight out. All right, so we'll set those aside. All right. That's gonna come off like that. Put that aside as well. Next, we're gonna grab our hex head, five millimeter. I'm gonna undo these three bolts here, here, and one on the bottom. Once the screws are out, this piece just comes off like that. I'll set these inside the tray and put this aside on the parts cart. When you do any of this process, you wanna make sure the bike is cold. Gotta be cold. You wanna burn yourself because the coolant system is pressurized when the bike is warm. So, this is our fill. Our drain here is on the bottom. And this here is our reservoir. Ideally, once you have the bike filled up, you fill the reservoir to the halfway point here, or this full mark, rather. And as the bike needs some coolant, there's a little siphon it will pull from here as a little reserve to help go and feed through the bike. And so this level will go up and down. More on that later on. But this is where you fill, and the drain is a small little plug that's right behind your kickstand. I'll show you that now. Okay, so the next step we want to do is we want to crack the drain bolt. Now the drain bolt is a 10 millimeter uh, bolt. I happen to have this, uh, obviously this wrench, this is snap-on wrench, it's got a thin walled, but a lot of my sockets won't fit, so I gotta use this by hand. But let me get down low here for you. Here's your kickstand. Here's your kickstand mount. Right, if you look, see that bolt with that green dot right in the middle? It's right here. That is the coolant drain bolt. It's got a little gray dot, green dot on it. It's green coolant in the bike. Yours may not have it on there, but that's where it is. All right. Mine's a little corrosion on there, so I gotta put you down. If this cracks, I'm really screwed, so I don't wanna. I gotta take my time on that. You gotta take your time so you can see. What I mean by having the bike on a stand, because otherwise, if you were on the kickstand, you you know how low you'd have to be real low to get your hand underneath this thing. So the stand is definitely worth it. This one in particular, it's less, it's less than it's under 200 bucks. I'll put the link below. I can only do a quarter turn at a time here. Because there's not a lot of wiggle room. Okay. The system is pressurized. If I take that off, it's going to leak out. So you want to make sure you're you're on a bit of an angle to catch the coolant as it comes. When you're holding the drain, hold it on an angle in a way and with your other hand crack open the fill cap, the pressure will release and it is going to flood out pretty quickly. So, take your time on doing this part. Got some old t-shirt, old rags. Just have them stand by to catch. And again, I've, you never don't do this with a warm bike because this stuff will piss out real fast all over you. Oh, here, I'm gonna hold this up like that. And I can actually see through the other side of the kickstand. Quarter turn, a click. Like I said, there's not a lot of wiggle room here. It may even take 10 minutes to get this stupid thing out. Oh, it's a long boy. That's a long boy for sure. All right. You know it's the right one because it has a copper crush washer on there. Now, it's under a vacuum, so it's only dripping out a little bit. When I reach up here and crack the top, gonna flush out. Ready? I'm gonna let go in three, two, one. Woo! See what I mean? It's like shampoo!
Yeah, got it. Got a little Sea World action here shooting at us. All right, now, uh, okay. Now, coolant, the color of like clean coolant, it's gonna be like green Gatorade or Predator green blood. If it bleeds. We can kill it. That's a bit darker, so you can tell it's, it's about time to change. Okay, so, once you got your bolt, your drain bolt out and you pop the cap and you drained all the coolant out, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this, put it, thread it back in and we're gonna pour some distilled water through and we'll run the bike a little bit to just clear out any residual that's in the system. All right, so I could just pour this in there but it might spill it all over the place. So I'm just gonna, good size funnel. When you put your funnel in, just hold it on an angle so you can see your water level. If you overflow it a little bit, it's fine. It's just clean water. If you change your coolant on a regular basis, you don't have to do this step, but things get trapped, dust gets in there, you know, such as things go, things can get dirty over time. So what I like to do is just do a little flush with, with the water. And pour slow so I can make sure I, have most of the air escape. Again, you're gonna take your time with this. Don't just go rushing it because you'll fill it up too fast and water will blow all over the place. See, there goes the air. Bubbling out. There you go. Whew. Almost two quarts later, we're finally capped up. Now that we're full, we're gonna take the radiator cap, put it back on, lock it down. We're gonna grab our key. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start the bike. Once we start it, let it idle for about a minute, and then you're gonna whip the throttle. And by doing so, you can help move the water around the system. It's safe to do, it's, it's not gonna get that hot in one, two, two minutes. So here we go. Turn the key, ignish. Just getting the distilled water to go through the system and dilute a little bit of the coolant. So when you drain it again, you're grabbing the coolant and you're pulling it out of it. Okay, I did that in live time. So that way you can get an idea, less than a minute. You just wanna get the impeller to move the distilled water through the system to help grab all the little bit of green coolant that didn't come out. Bike's not hot, but it's water is now cycled through. So now what you're gonna do is you're just going to grab your 10 millimeter again and you're gonna undo the drain bolt and draining out what you have here. Doing it right, it won't be as dark. It will be a lot lighter. One cycle is fine. You wanna do this two times, three times. It doesn't hurt it. You're just getting that much more out of the system and cleaning it out. But I think that's good. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just lie down again and then crack and drain everything else into our container. Undo your bolt, drain it out. Okay, same thing. The drain bolt and the washer itself is out. 
small, slight vacuum. Put my container and we're gonna crack this in three, two, one. See, much thinner. It's not so dark green. Remember how dark green that was before? Now it's that much lighter. That is a successful flush. Since I have the whole gown, I'm gonna use basically the whole gown. I'm gonna do this cycle one more time, but I don't think I need to show that. You get the idea. So with the whole gallon, I flush it out a second time because why not? Uh, I have, you don't wanna use all of it, but there's enough to flush it twice. There's a reason why you wanna have a little bit extra. There's one more step in terms of flushing, but this is the second time I flushed. Now that looks a lot better than the first time. I like this. Don't mind the little dirty bits that are in there that you might see. Those were already there from the dirty pan itself, but this is definitely a lot clearer than that dark green. So I'm just gonna kind of pour everything over here. If you have uh, old coolant or a place to dispose like I do, I mean, I put it in a big five gallon bucket. I have a, at work, I can dispose of it. But if you don't, uh, you can go to your local parts store. They, if you find some empty bottles, most recycle places will accept coolant and they can take care of it for you. Shouldn't be a fee or anything like that, but uh, yeah. Or just bury it in your yard. No, don't do that. But. Um, yeah, you, there's always places to dispose chemicals. You can ask, go to Advanced Auto Parts, just ask them, your local motorcycle shop, or see what they recommend. Now that we got that squared away, we flush the bike itself twice, or however many times you just feel like you wanna do it, more the merrier, it doesn't hurt it, but I think two times is good. Um, we have to clean out the coolant in the reservoir. So, I put the cap back on, so I put everything back where it needs to be for now. I'm leaving the drain bolt out. But we, this is the coolant overflow. And we wanna, there's coolant in here. I wanna flush this out. Now, this has a rubber cap. Now, if your bike, if it's not on all the way, if it popped off, this is a great way to get things you don't want in your system. As the bike warms and heats the coolant, it creates a vacuum. That vacuum helps cycle through the bike itself. Now, things expand, so it needs to go somewhere. Liquid expands. So it will expand in the, res the reserve tank. At the bottom of the tank is a siphon hose, this one here. So as coolant expands, goes through the bike, through your normal cycles, it will go into this little expansion chamber here. As the bike cools down, the siphon will pull the expanded hot coolant that has cooled down back into the system. That's why there's a full and the low line. Now this cap is only a little rubber. Things get in there. So what you want to do is after you flush your system out, you want to clean out your reservoir. Now you can see already, I haven't even touched this, I just, there's dirt all over this thing. It's low, it's on the lower backhand part of your bike. This is why we took the silver piece off. So in order to take this part off, we're just going to use an eight millimeter socket on this here, and we're gonna pull off this siphon hose, and it's got a little metal clip right there on the bottom. So we're gonna do that now. So you're gonna take your eight mil socket, Pull this bolt out, put it down somewhere, don't lose it. Kinda slowly pull out your tank here. Okay. Make sure your rubber seal is on, that way you don't splash all over yourself. Oh, come on. Okay, look at all that. Brake dust, grime, everything else back there. So this is your expansion tank. There is an upper level and a lower level. When it's in the bike, you can actually look at it through the backside. You can get down low. But 
it's only held on, it's held in by the frame here. And then, so it doesn't go anywhere. It's that eight mil bolt. But like I said, on the bottom is an, a little clip. I'm gonna just turn it down low, squeeze the ears, shimmy the clip up. All right, you can use your pliers. Try to get this off. It's gonna be on there pretty good. Once you have it up, off, I'm gonna pop the cap. Dump it out. Once you dump the contents out, this is a great opportunity. Cover this up, back up. Wipe it down. Get any dirt off, use a rag. Now, this is why I kept some of the distilled water. Fill it up. Drain it out. I'll cap it with my finger. Fill it. Put the cap back on. A good shake. Now, yours might have some dust in it. Yours might be clean. I'd rather just be on the safer side and give this a rinse too. You paid for the whole gallon, use it. Perfect. So what do we do? We flushed the bike twice. We flushed out our reserve tank. We've wiped all the dust down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this back on the bike. We are going to then pour in and fill in our coolant but there's a little bit involved, don't you pour on the top. There's two areas to fill and this, and we'll do that now. All right, so I'm just gonna cap this here. You just push it over its little piece there. It will snap into place. We're gonna plug our hose back on, grab our pliers, shimmy down our piece, Squeeze together. You want to get over that little T. There happens to be a little line in there. It can go back over. You'll see where you took it out from, but as long as it gets out past the little burr in there, this ain't coming out. Tuck this right back here and reinstall our eight millimeter bolt. Next, the little crush washer. You should replace them. I have them. I'm looking all over. I couldn't find them. I don't know what I did with them. But uh, I'll put the part number in the link below for you to order one as well. They should be changed every time. Um, I'm not going to do that just because, well, I can't find it. But if you put it in there and you snug it up, not too tight, when you fill the coolant and you create that vacuum, it's gonna help suck this little washer in anyway. So you should be fine, um, but uh, don't over crank these because if you smush them all out, you're going to have to replace that. So the next step is to just screw it back in. There is a torque spec on the drain bolt. It's not even in foot pounds. It was 13 Newton meters. But at this point, just because it's a crush washer, just make sure it's snug. Give it a, uh -uh, a little uh -uh, one, two pull and you're fine. Once that's in, now we'll begin the process of filling the coolant. Okay, washed out, clean the reservoir. Reservoir is back on, we replace the crush washer, put that back in for the drain. Now we're gonna come here, we're gonna open the fill. There are two areas that we need to fill. The main throw of the radiator itself, then there's this line here, and then we're going to fill up to the maximum line on the coolant of the expansion tank. In case you're wondering, this second hose here is the bypass hose. So as coolant goes through, some expands, bypasses the system, trickles its way back down to the expansion tank and throughout the bike. It has a pin on it. I'm just gonna scoot it around so we can gain access here. Take your absolute time when filling. Okay, once you filled the main part of 
the radiator where you see the fluid there on the bottom. The next you wanna do is you fill the bypass line. The bypass line is a bit smaller, obviously. So this is why I like using the multi-packed funnels because now I have the little small daddy here that I could just place in the line, expanded side up, okay? Now it's gonna be a bit messy, but go slow, even slower than you were pouring before. As you pour in the bypass line, it should lead down to the expansion on the bottom. So you don't have to do a lot, just a little to verify that there's no blockages and that you can see some of the coolant coming in through here. Once that's secured, you know you're flowing well. I'm gonna just easily take the line, plug it back over and slide your clip onto the bike and line right there, perfect. Now that we filled the main line, we poured through the bypass line, there are no blockages from there down to the expansion tank. You can continue to fill the bypass until you get to the high mark or you can, can fill the rest of the reservoir here. Take a look in there. I see the coolant is down the pipe a little bit. That's good. Put the radiator cap back on, lock it down. We're gonna run the bike for about 30 seconds. It's gonna cycle this fresh coolant through the system. Any air that's trapped anywhere in the piping will make itself back to the top of the cap where you can take the cap back off, top to the bottom of the neck, and you just we're just gonna continue the process until I can't get any more in and the system is full. So we ran it a bit. In the meantime, I kind of picked up anything that I dripped, clean up my area a little bit. Again, do not do this when your bike is hot. We're only turning it on a little bit at a time to get the coolant flowing through. So it's not gonna be too expansive or explosive, but you still wanna be careful. Once your 30 seconds is up, turn this a little bit. Let some of the air equalize in case there is some slight pressure. Full turn or move slowly. Wow, take a look. The coolant level is not that far off. Remember when I said take your time when filling? The more time you take when filling, the more the air can pull up through the system. That only went down a little bit. So we poured it just the way we should pour it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top a little bit more off in there and we're gonna repeat the process just a couple more times just to verify that we got coolant going all the way through the system. I filled it a little too much. This inner neck part is the lower bottom of the line. So uh, now when I put my plug in, my cap, some of that might squeeze out. Just be careful, just be known about that. I'm gonna take a rag, hold it below. Take my two ears, make sure they're lined in. Okay, we're locked in. Ah, huh, pretty good, no drips. Same process, turn the bike on, idle, let it warm up a little bit. Maybe run it for an extra minute and wick the throttle a little bit, get things moving again, and we'll verify it and make sure that we got all the air out of the system. <laughs> with the throttle. So much torque, the chassis twisted off the line. All right, 
That's about a minute. <coughs> I'm slowly killing myself with the exhaust fumes. A little bit warmer now. I'm gonna take the rag, put it over the top, give it a crack, some small turns. Heard a little gurgling sound, so that's a good sign. And if you look, the coolant is right to the bottom neck. We are so close. I'm gonna pour just a wee bit more. I'm talking a couple more drips. Cycle it through again. I just want to make sure I got all the air gaps out and we'll call that that. Well, would you look at that? Exactly how I left it. Expansion tank just above the upper level. I'm satisfied with that. Perfect. It's about 1.8 liters of coolant for the system. This is 1.893 and I got a little bit left on the bottom. Boy, was she thirsty. She took everything we had. So we ran a multiple cycles. The, the impeller moved around the bike. We had a couple gurgling sounds. I'm a little bit over. That's perfectly okay. I'm very happy with that. Right on that line. Again, you can always check from the back to see the full level. The system is topped up. Now you're all set. You put it your things back together, and then... No and then! And then! No and then! And then! No, no and then! You're all ready to rip! After you do the coolant change, you go for a couple rides here or there. Take a look on the back of the fill line. You want to take everything all apart. Just take a flashlight and look. If it's a little low, it's so easy. You take your remaining coolant, and you top off the little reservoir there, keep it around that full mark, and you're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and just button her back up. Just do it in reverse order. That five millimeter hex bolt I put back. So we're just gonna unscrew that here. Here are your parts where the rubber grommets go into action. Line up your holes. Pop your piece in, take your bolt, thread it in, give it a snug. Take your tool pack, pack over your ignition. You take your bolts. And your five mil hex head again. Take your ignition cover itself, slip that over. Now for your push pins, you wanna just pinch. If it gets stuck, squeeze the two pieces and the T-handle should raise up more. Once it's like that, once you push this piece down, it expands and locks in. And there you go, that's it. That's today's episode, that is how you change your coolant out on your Honda Fury. Now there's nothing left to do now except take her out for a rip. Just drive around and go on with your life. Let me know if this helped you. If there's anyone who knows how to do their coolant as well, if you have any other tips or tricks, anything that I didn't mention, leave a comment. Let's help each other out. If you like this video, let me know. If you like the video, leave a comment too. Let me know what you thought about it. Any feedback just makes the channel a lot better. Enjoy the weekend. We'll see you next week, all right? Peace!